So we're having a little look at the underside of this Betaflight F3 board. Um, now there are a few little quirks and bits I've noticed from reading the RC Group's um, Betaflight F3 post, um, just in regards to um, how things are, how things have to be hooked up. Um, there has been a few issues that I've read with the voltage regulation, even though it's a, a whopping three amp. Uh, 5 volt regulator on here I have heard that that voltage can dip below 5 volts and it has been causing people certain problems when it comes to their video equipment. Um, I don't know what revision this board is or whether that is something that maybe affected some of the early boards. Um, I can't see a revision anywhere on the silk screen to, to actually know the answer to that. Um, but either way I am going to run um, at the VBAT voltage for my uh, Unify Pro Race and my uh, camera, both of which are rated for uh, well above the voltage of 4 or even up to 6S, so that shouldn't be an issue for me. Now, in terms of that actual um, uh, video side of things, it's basically uh, pertaining to this rail here. So you have the video in pin at the top here, which is uh, where the video signal from the camera will come. The next one down is the video out, that will go to your uh, video going out to your VTX. Obviously this has an OSD so it has to run through this board. Um, you then have the RAM uh, voltage here, and so this pin um, as far as I can see, and I did have, um, I did notice a schematic which seemed to point that this is actually filtered as well, which is good news. Um, you can either select it to be 5 volts or you can select it to be VBAT. Now this is done over here, um, although again the silk screen is very, very small and it's quite tough to see. Um, you have to bridge these pads here for that RAM pin, and if you bridge them to the top you get uh, the VBAT voltage to the RAM pin and if you go from the middle to the lower one here you get 5 volts to the RAM pin so I'll be bridging the middle to the top to get VBAT and then you have A ground which is the um, the ground that you need to associate uh, with the, the video uh, in and from the camera and the VTX so that whole rail is basically dealing with the video side of things. In terms of running the receiver um, it depends on whether you're running, uh, say if you're like me and you're running FR Sky stuff, you want to run it on 5 volts. Um, the voltage pin is this one here and again it's selectable with this uh, bridge up the top here. If you bridge from the middle to the top you can set it to 3 volts or 3.3 I think it is which will be for spectrum. You have the ground, that configurable voltage and the signal at the top here. Or if you bridge to the lower uh, the lower one here and make that bridge up it will become 5 volts which is what I would be doing for um, the S bus stuff. Um, but yeah, one of the issues is there is no thermal relief around these pads um, and what I mean by that is when you actually try and heat these up there's nothing to contain the amount of heat that you're putting in from your soldering iron so when you heat up the ground rail it's going to heat up the whole ground rail it's going to start warming up or this one and this one and basically the whole ground rail is going to have to get hot and it's going to act like a heat sink it's going to take heat away from the pad you're trying to heat up so you're really going to have to work with a hot iron um, to do any of the work on the ground pins and although I haven't actually soldered the thing to this yet that's something I'm prepared for um, by what I've read already on the uh, on the forum. Um, that said something to be wary of um, the main battery leads which go here the plus is on this side and on the top side of the board if you flip it over you've got the ground those you should definitely solder on last because again if you put those big thick battery wires with the XT60 on uh, on here first the problem is immediately you've just added to that uh, ability for it that you've, you've added more thermal soak you've you've made another kind of extension to that heat sink so if you put those on first um, when it comes to soldering the uh, certainly the ground in you'll find you'll have exactly the same well the problem will be made worse because as well as heating up the grounds around the rest of the board it's also going to dissipate heat through those big thick uh, high current wires going off to your XT60 also bad news so we're going to do those last for sure uh, in the meantime I'm going to do these two um, uh, bridge these two voltage uh, rail so that we've got the uh, RAM voltage sorted and the uh, SBUS voltage sorted and then I'll do a little bit of tinning um, on the board so that we're prepped and ready to go so let's get on with that.
other thing I like to do here, I've installed some nylon standoffs, um, is what you don't want is to really kind of force everything down like that because if you're going to put any uh, dampening in there it's not really going to have the greatest effect. Um, so the nice thing about using nylon standoffs is, is actually that you can you can get them and ever so slightly bend them uh, into the right position um, which is what I tend to do with all of my builds where I'm using this um, so that eventually I can get it where they're just everything is sitting on there nice and flush so the, the minute it looks like the two left are lined up pretty nice maybe this one needs to come in a little bit so you want to do this without being being careful not to damage the thread too much um, but you're just trying to bend those tips to a point where everything sits on nice and evenly so that's almost there now looks like see how the front two are going on really really easily so all I want to now do is make sure so it looks like I've actually gone the wrong way with this one let's put that one back the other thing you can do is um, file out the middle sections of these a little bit if you want to really go to town and it doesn't matter massively with this uh, MPU 6000 gyro um, it is really just me being uh, OCD about trying to get everything as nice and smooth as possible that's pretty much where I want it now the whole thing kind of feels much less sticky the whole thing kind of just sort of slots down on there quite easily now um, and that will just allow the uh, dampening to do its job a little bit when we put some uh, some dampening isolators either side of the of those posts and I'm going to go with a couple of these little um, silicone o-rings here um, it's actually quite easy to make those up yourself I have mentioned it before but if you take some uh, battery wire um, and you uh, take the take the uh, the wires out of it and then cut it into cut it into sections if I can get that to focus um, you can then make yourself up so you've got any old battery leads these make excellent little silicone dampening rings and then when we put the beta flight board down you can see it's uh, on there nice and nice and loose which is the way you want it and it's sitting on top of those dampening rings I'll then put a second set of rings on the top side and then I will be putting down like this a uh, two female ends of a standoff and then on top of that will go this plate that came in the kit and then I'm going to put a screw on top of that and then I can utilize this to mount um, perhaps the uh, receiver maybe the VTX I'm not quite sure which way I'll go yet with that but that's how that's going to work so um, I guess we can crack on with the wiring now okay so one issue that we're going to have here um, with soldering this board is the fact that the actual ESC power wires are on the underside of the board um, so I think that's going to make things a little bit tricky um, not just in terms of uh, soldering up as we go all the way round um, but also in terms of you know servicing if there's ever any need to get to the underside of this board and lift this off once this is all down that's going to be tricky then you know we really need to accommodate some slack into this um, what I'll probably do is perhaps the back ESCs I will allow for some slack underneath um, because of the way these work I'm actually going to if I put it around this way so you can see I'll have the wires come extend for a little bit and then loop back here so I've got some some extension here on the on the back too and then when this is all wired up that way that will mean that if I do need to service it that extra wire length will mean I'll be able to tip this board back um, to this kind of angle so at least I can work on it um, if I just do short wires on all um, that's going to be a real pain um, I'll literally have to disassemble right back to lifting the motors off to actually get to the underside of this which would be um, that'd be a pig really so I think that's how I'm going to move forward with this
four ESCs are now wired in um, with enough slack on the back ones so that this can be angled up if I need to work on the underside of the board uh, in future. Um, it's the same for the motor signal wires which wire onto the top of the Betaflight board. Um, so that's kind of ready to go now. Um, the last thing we need to do in terms of main power is wiring this XT60 which is going to be um, a pretty short affair indeed to get those wired in and then uh, attached down to that lower plate uh, and then we now need to look at wiring in the camera cable and the VTX cable and the SBUS cable for the FR Sky receiver.